Hello guys, confession. In this month of October, I totally forgot about our new monthly tradition of tips and tricks from Twitter every month. And you didn't remind me of that in the comments. Seriously? So yeah, a bit later than usual. It should have been in the beginning of October for the September, but better late than never. Let's recap the interesting thing on Twitter, tips and tricks on Laravel and PHP from September. I think it's about eight or nine tips. So without further ado, let's go. The first tweet comes from Osama, the conditionable trait. So let me zoom that in. So yeah, there's a trait called conditionable that comes from vendor in Laravel. And if you use that on any class, then when calling that class, you can do something like this. Instead of adding if statements with some conditions, you can do one liners. Call the class and then chain when this, then callback function when that, another callback function. I don't remember using that personally and I didn't even know about that, but it's cool to know that Laravel has that conditionable trait if you want to use that anywhere. The second tip comes from myself and it's about migrations or about general code readability for that matter. If you have a migration with a lot of fields, it's beneficial to first separate them into kind of groups or code blocks and then add some comments to make it clear which field works in which way. So this is much more readable in my personal opinion than if you just list all the fields one by one without any spaces. I know it's kind of obvious for many of you, but I've seen so many migration files just bombarding the columns that I wanted to emphasize that. And of course, there's a question whether that table should be split into a few tables. That's a separate topic. But this tip was about specifically code readability with example of migrations. The next tip comes from Newton job. It's about pivot tables and about the method called with pivot value. Did you know about it? Let's take a look at the example. So you have belongs to many, typically normal eloquent method. Then you attach the author and then there's where pivot. I'm not sure if you knew about it. So you can get the users and query pivot or instead there's this with pivot value allows you to create separate relationships between the same tables with some conditions. And then whenever you need that in controller or elsewhere, you just call the method without the condition in the controller because the condition is already included in the relationship itself. So then in the controller, you just do authors attach or editors attach calling that specific relationship. The next tip comes from myself, which became almost the most viral tweet of the month from myself. It was a two minute video and I will link that in the description below so you can watch that. But basically before running PHP artisan test, please, please make sure that you're working with testing database. And in the reply to this tweet, many people confessed that they burned from that many times accidentally or without knowing that running PHP artisan test on the live database wiping the data without possibility to get it back. So this is mostly the tip for beginners. So do your configuration in phpunit.xml or .env.testing before running PHP artisan test for the first time. The example in the video came from Laravel Breeze, which includes tests by default. So you can install Laravel Breeze starter kit, play around and then immediately run PHP artisan test because the tests are included. But if you don't configure the database, that would be executed on your main database and you do not want that. Again, the video will be in the description below. The next tip comes from Aniket and it's also about testing, but it's about rare edge cases when sometimes the test may pass or fail, depending on the data that is generated by faker. So in factories, for example, you generate some fake data and sometimes that fake number is causing the test to pass in most of the times, but sometimes it fails. If it generates negative number, for example, lower or higher number, or for example, generate string with quotes or apostrophes inside, which often breaks the text comparison. So this is the scenario. And one of the solutions to that is to have repeat method for specific tests to ensure or to increase the probability that tests do not fail in many cases if you run that multiple times. Of course, a better way to approach that is to identify the fake data, the testing data to be specifically as close as possible to the expected data in reality, but you never know. So sometimes it is worth running tests, the same test multiple times with different fake data and identify the edge cases where the test would fail. 
The next tip comes from Ash Allen, and we're not running away from testing again and from faking the data again. So if you generate some random strings for your testing, for example, sometimes you don't want that random to be totally random. So here's an example. You define that random string is actually Laravel, and then whenever you call that random somewhere else, it will return your hard-coded string for that only for that case. I know it's pretty edge case scenario and pretty rarely happens, but it was cool to me to know that that feature exists in Laravel, so you can override the randomness for strings. The next quick tip comes from Backpack for Laravel. Their Twitter account is pretty active recently in giving the tips. The screenshot is pretty blurry, but you still see the essence. If you want to update the data but not update the updated add column, you just set timestamps to false for that specific case. You call the save method and then updated add would not be updated. Only the fields that you provided for the object of eloquent will be updated in the database. The next tip comes from Newton job again, and you can already see the people repeating names in those videos of tips and tricks. So do follow them because they post more tips, not only the ones that I publish here on YouTube. So Newton job suggests that if you have this structure, so user with posts with some conditions, and the condition is that posts that have comments unpublished in the future, as I understand, a quicker way, a shorter way is to use where relation. So you can use where relation on multiple levels. To be honest, I haven't tried that tip. I have a small suspicion that maybe it doesn't work in all cases, so please try it out yourself. But if it does work, then the syntax is very elegant. That's why 500 likes on Twitter here. Also, I'm not sure if that null works exactly as expected because with null, Laravel has different syntax if you do that on eloquent query or in collections from what I remember. Anyway, if it works as expected, you can provide the array of conditions and condition may be bigger than or just the value or null. And you can do that two levels deep with has many relationships. Again, please try it out in your projects. And the final tip, I want to end this video on kind of a philosophical note. Tip comes from me. How you do anything is how you do everything. There is a quote, I'm not sure about the author, but I posted this example, this classical example that user all is what we often do, but instead we should adopt the habit to select only what we need, use pagination when we need, and basically optimize the queries on small amounts of data. And that's why this example got 160 likes. It's not about that specific example of selecting the fields. It's about the habit of thinking what can go wrong with performance on bigger amount of data. So quite often we write the code quickly like this for the time being with the goal of deliver this feature for this project as soon as possible. But quite often it takes only roughly one extra minute or even seconds to specify something, additional condition, additional query, additional fields or something like that to ensure that the same query would work performantly, I'm not sure if it's even a word, if the project grows and if your database is much bigger. So yeah, these are the tips and tricks from September on Twitter. Again, monthly tradition, and I hope I will not forget that in the first days of November to recap the October tweets. Which one did you like most? Maybe you disagree with something? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.